and Warren strokes the three from the left wing. Gagliardi, why not? He's feeling it. He's oh, four six from three. Goodness. Their junior down the lane drops to Rainwater for a two-handed slam. See, that's what you do. He will tear down a rim this year. Largely able to blow by the pressure. Now a lob. Rivers throws it down. Cato tries it again. You bet. Caleb Cato back-to-back threes. What is going on, guys? You are listening to Screech Report. This is Elliot Cressy on the mic. I hope you like the new intro. Let us know. I think it's fire. Don't tell me otherwise, because I made it. <laughs> Join here, as always, by the Rusty Bandwagon. Russell, I don't know why I called you I'm that. a bandwagon. That's such know, a negative connotation. Bandwagons can be rusty, and your nickname's Rusty, so. All right. As per your groom shirts. Groom shirts. Groomsmen's shirts, sorry. True. We went to the Keys. Russell's getting married. Congratulate him on the side. Uh, actually, or or not, you could be like everybody else and say, that's a that's a trap. Don't get <laughs> I was, married. I was telling like my sister and whoever else just about the weekend for the bachelor party. And um, I'm just like, at least half of the men who were like, hey, congrats on you know getting married. They were all like, but don't do it. And it's like... <laughs> Stay yeah, the real reason we haven't done a pod is because we're still recovering from Bachelor Party Weekend. It's been three <laughs> months the total recovery. No, we were doing it for two months. And we didn't even drink. <laughs> we just went down there and did puzzles and, you know. Crosswords, <laughs> game shows. Sudoku. 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 Come on, man. Call check. No, but, uh, you know, life has been okay. This year sucked, but it's been okay. Um, what's new in your life besides getting married in less than a month? Um, honestly, nothing. Birthday? Yeah, I had a birthday a uh, week and a half ago. I'm uh, 75. <laughs> no, he's uh, now sprouting gray hairs everywhere. I've had gray hair for a few years. I, I mean, it's not it's not the legend Brett Comer gray, but it's that's platinum. Yeah, it's platinum. <laughs> <laughs> so we got basketball at the time of this pod within a week few days away hopefully fingers crossed appendages <laughs> cross everything you can cross just cross it my eyes yeah keep them that way get them stuck like your grandma used to say <laughs> or when you get too close to the tv screen and you're they're gonna stay that way you're gonna go blind <laughs> little did you know mom that i would have a virtual <laughs> virtual reality headset strapped to my face in 2020 and a tv literally two inches from your eyeballs <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah, basketball, college basketball, FGCU basketball. The best kind. Kicking off. Alico Arena, limited capacity crowd. 7 p.m. Wednesday, 11.25. November 25th. Yeah, not no. p.m. Maybe the game will go that long. No. Hopefully not. Four overtimes. Um, we play Florida. A. And M. Yep. University. FAMU. Should be Florida M M&M. and M. They have like M and M's. You know, we toss out T-shirts. You get the idea. What do you mean? Have the M and M guys in the costume no, toss them out? Have their version of of Shane Pe- Pellegrin, or I'm not sure your last name. Sorry, man. Um, you know, throwing out cannons full of M and M's. That would be so much better. <laughs> be, it would hurt. Be Just like open pellets. your mouth and ah! choke them down. <laughs> but I feel like if it was Florida M M&M and M University. You wouldn't have nearly as many majors to choose from. It's strictly... It would just be all business. Well, business, you'd have, you'd marketing. You'd have the, the M&M factory workers, you know, yeah. technical degrees. You'd be trade school, too. Business management for M&Ms, mm-hmm. marketing for M&Ms. There's, there's a lot of opportunity. You're trying to tell me there's not. Innovation of M&Ms. Totally. Engineering? Engineering of M&Ms. Social work? <laughs> Man, I, I want to go to the school. I want to... Counseling? Step back in time and go to Florida. <laughs> M&M University. The psychology of the colors of M&Ms. Sorry, FGCU. I choose Florida M M&M and M University. <laughs> <laughs> Go M and M's. Right, built-in mascot. All right. Enough with the bull. Russell wrote a beautiful, poetic uh, season preview article that's online. You can access it at https colon at <laughs> backslash www dot wwe dot com <laughs> screecherreport dot com <laughs> slash I don't know just go just, to the, just go there it's one of the first articles link in bio or just look at our social media posts 
Um, so season preview, we yes, got sir. was a seventy percent of the returning scoring coming from back. last year. Yeah, uh, we got four seniors. Is it? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, Eli, it's Abaya. a big mix this year. We got four seniors, like three juniors, two juniors, which is a two good juniors, sign. and then like four sophomores and three freshmen, something like that. Four, yeah, I believe you're right. About so it's that. a good mix. Whereas, like, I think in years past, it was fifteen freshmen. Mm-hmm. And no seniors. No. <laughs> Fifteen. Fre- that's the whole team. <laughs> that's kind of what it you're felt only allowed like. to have thirteen scholarships. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm exaggerating, know, but that's how it felt. Yeah, maybe two years ago. It did for the last couple of years. Just such a young, even the even the upperclassmen, like we talked about last year, were JUCO transfers, so they weren't with the team before. They weren't playing D1 ball. It was junior college, so even the juniors. Shut up, dog. Even the juniors felt like, you know, freshmen. That's Harley, if you if you can hear her. They could definitely what hear What up, Harley? <laughs> so, I know the lineups have always been a day-to-day situational uh, situation. You're talking starting fives? Yes. Yeah. But this year, more than ever, well, not more than ever, but more than the last two years, there's we're poised for a, a more... Solid starting five, probably. Yeah, with the you know, I would say so. A fluctuation of one or two guys, but so who who are your locks? You're for sure gonna start. It has to be Cato, Warren, Cato, Warren, and um, probably Rainwater. I would say I would agree with your first two. Cato and Warren are locks. I think Eli Abayev is a lock. True. I don't necessarily think Rainwater is. I think he'll have the same minutes regardless of if he starts or not. He's going to play a role just like he did last year and maybe, you know, I'm working on his free throws maybe a little bit more. But I think he's the only – he's like – he's a probable starter, but I don't think he's a lock because you have so many other options now. Um, In the sense of unknowns, he's the probable starter. But, yeah, you know, pending Eli and – what we think he brings if to the table. If we're rating, like, who's going to start out of five, five being a lock, I think Cato and Warren are fives. I think Rainwater's a four. And I think Abayev's, like, a 4.5. You just totally, I think, confused everybody by... <laughs> I'm not talking about positions. I know, but that's exactly what I was... <laughs> you are like, Cato and Warren out of five, and I was yeah, like... Yeah, we're going to play them at center <laughs> this year. <laughs> what the hell is going on? I get it, though. I get yeah. it. Um... Okay, but, then then what are the other probable or not probables, but like situationships? Well, <laughs> personally, I think the biggest question as far as starting lineups is that last guard spot. Because um, I mean, with the bigs, you can say it's going to be some combination of a buy of rivers and rainwater, most likely. Um, but and you know it's going to be Cato and Warren, but then you have this other guard spot. And with five potential players, right? You got a cr- transfer with three years of eligibility from Ole Miss, Franco Miller Jr. You got a really just high profile JUCO guy, a third team All American, Dom London. You got Mr. Glove Up, um, Cyrus Largy, who you know, he's a coach favorite, he's a fan favorite, he's a teammate favorite. He's you know, people are just really excited to see what he can do with a full year of you know, being a scholarship player and getting consideration to actually play. Um, you got freshman, you know, Victor Rosa, who, I mean, you know, I always say if you can shoot, you're going to play. So he's, you know, been talked about as a three point shooter. Speaking of that, there's Sam Gagliardi, a senior, you know, so a guy who started like 20 games last year. So it's, there's so many options for that last guard spot that it's really hard to pick just one. Real excited to see all the, not new players, but just the, the new team mesh, um, and just the different lineups and, and chemistry with those lineups. So we shall see. Um, to summarize the other part of the article, potential most improved. We all saw what you know freshman Dakota Rivers brought last year. Limited a little bit in minutes. He was young, but he's he had games where he showed, you know. If I remember correctly, he scored 18 in the game. It was Florida. Um, National Tech or Florida Tech, National, one, one of those. Of those. But yeah, and he had a he had at least one double digit rebound game. A couple like I think he had one double double, like an eleven and. 
But he changed shoes, 14. so now it's going to be up in the air. As long as you know. <laughs> it's always the shoe power. He'll probably go back to those pinks, though. <laughs> the pinks is what yeah. elevated him to 18 yeah. points a game. Then so. again, you look at his photo shoot stuff. He has like one blue, one green. I'm all about it. I'm here for it. Maybe he's <laughs> expanding his skill set. The, yeah. pink, the pink was offensive. Maybe now multicolor is, green, you know. What's the color of the team? Right. Yeah. Now he's getting his defense and assists. You know who I seem to remember having pretty cool shoes all the time? Mark Eddie Norelia. They were like purple. For one year, he had some purple shoes. And man, that was his year where he was like, you know what? I'm going to score 18 a game. I don't give a damn. And yeah. Uh, You want to jump into stat projections? Let's do it. This is the geek stuff that we do. Like, and this is very official. So <laughs> any deviations from this, you know, the whole season's a mess. I don't even want to joke about it because someone's gonna say, "Do you guys thought he was gonna score a thousand points a game and hold us accountable?" Yeah. Like we're on trial ESPN for murder, or, you know, <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah. These are this is very unofficial. Kind of, we thought about it for maybe fifteen minutes. This and is the stuff that we geek out over. Years before Screecher Report, we would just back and forth be like. Dude, how do you think, you know, how many points do you think Brandon Goodwin's going to get this year each game? You know, what's, how many rebounds is Morant going to have per game? And, you know, we just geek out about it and didn't come up for no reason. We would come up with Excel spreadsheets (laughs) just because we were excited about (laughs) the season starting and we wanted to just, you know, BS about it. But anyway, here we are with a semi growing platform and you know the ability to actually put these things in words so let's run through it you you can rattle off the first two or three all of them i don't care so i got Cato coming in at number one 16 points a game four rebounds three assists warren uh increasing his average to 14 points a game a few rebounds and five assists uh the newcomer eli abayev 11 points, 10 rebounds. I'm looking for that double-double average. Pretty bold to predict a double-double, but he did, yeah. what was the... 8-8 eight and eight at eight. Austin P. Good conference. Right. So, I mean, the A-Sun isn't the best rebounding league. It never has been. You got a few guys, but, I mean, I just I just really see him getting those caromes, those boards. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Cyrus Largy, 10 points a game, three rebounds, two Woo! assists. Double digits. Uh-huh. For the young buck. That uh, man. Dakota Rivers, eight points, four rebounds. Justice Rainwater, seven points, five rebounds. Sam Gagliardi, six points, three boards. And yeah, so on and so forth. Some jumps out of some guys. Um, you know, you never know with freshmen how they're going to play, so it's almost hard to grade them at all, but. And yeah, there's no real no there's no real point to this other than like we want to see what it may look like on paper right. as a possibility. And then if I get one of these yeah, like, then you're like 15, yeah. right? I'm like, look how great I am. <laughs> <laughs> so the other fun thing that we've done in years past is very unprofessionally run through the schedule and pick a win or loss based on about one out of ten research. It's the gut gamble, dude. The gut gamble part two. Three? Two. Part two. We haven't been doing this for three years. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, gut gamble is just we rattle off the game. Russell says win or loss. I say win or loss. Maybe we talk about why for some bullshit reasons. Maybe, you know, (laughs) the weird (laughs) mojo, juju, you know. it's. So, yeah, gut gamble, round two. Let's go. Start with Russell on November 25th, season opener. Florida A and M at home. W. 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 First time in for Fly as a head coach. It's only three sample size, but a win first game of the season. I agree. I, I said a W two. Well, you know, if you think about it, our first game last year was UMBC, and by all accounts, we should have won that game. Like we were winning that game for ninety eight percent of the we game. Collapsed. Yeah, in the last two minutes, and Darnell Rogers shout out. And he had like 30 something points. He was a god that game. But more like a Spartan. That's, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. He's a little <laughs> a little small to be a god, but he can be a Spartan. A Spartan. Yeah. Persian. <laughs> um but yeah, you know, I'm I'm thinking a W against Florida A and M and you know, it could go either way. You never know how teams start the season, especially in these times, but that's what I feel. Right on, I agree. I said a W. Next game, home. 
Florida National is 10 days apart, though. But it, it's <laughs> Florida National. Right. Um, these are those games. I don't know if they're NAIA or D2 or 3, but it's... Not uh, D1. Not D1. These are uh, games that you're supposed to win by 20-plus. I'm going to say W. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say W. Next game. This was a surprise to me when it was announced in the non-con. But the big one. At Miami. Uh, no fans allowed. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. 12 p.m. Actually, that, that may change my opinion. But Yep, December 12th at Miami. This is kind of a rematch from 2013. 12? Or 12, yeah. 12. It was the first half of the year. In which we resoundly... Is that a word? Resoundingly. Resoundingly. One... Um, and then we all know what happens after right. that. Cinderella's. I love to say a W, but I'm I'm choosing L. Yeah, come on, it's an L. <laughs> it's a quick L. It's a quick one. I'd like to uh, if we lose by less than fifteen, I would call that a really good showing. And that's not a slight. It's just I mean, it's the ACC. Prove me wrong. Yeah, it's the ACC. Get pumped. every time I say L, prove me wrong. Yeah, you will be two and O. Don't prove me wrong when I say W. <laughs> yeah, believe me then. <laughs> Believe you me. <laughs> uh, shortly after that, we have another ho- home game against FIU. Can you guess what? <laughs> I know what you put, and I put the same damn thing. It's going to be an L. Dude, FIU, <laughs> every year, I don't know what it is. It, it's it like it's like It's like FIU, I don't know, that's the wrong word, but I'll say it. it they, did, they juice up, and they they become like Duke or something, and yeah. they, just, they just beat us. It didn't matter how good we were in years past. Like... We weren't going to dominate FIU, ever. Uh, we could. It seems, though, we do worse at their place. I don't remember going to their place. I feel yeah, like they, they got the weird court with the palm trees and the oh, island yeah. art and stuff, and it's just a weird weird vibe. And we got I mean, it's at cool, home. but it's, it's just weird. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we beat FIU at home last year, or FAU at home last year. FIU beat us pretty bad last year, but they had... I remember doing the preview to that game. I don't game. think we've beat them in at least two, three seasons. Well, we haven't beat a lot of people in two, three seasons. but No, but we usually play FIU every year. Yeah. And usually we'll win one. Well, what I was saying is last year it was their it was their win it all year. Like the whole team seniors and 20 points a game people. And it was like that was their year. Even if we were, you know, Brandon Goodwin, Zach Johnson, Christian Terrell, Norelli and Morant, um, God lineup, it, it wouldn't have been easy. Um, but I, I haven't looked into them this year. That's the point yeah. of this gut gamble, but I'm still going to go with the L, unfortunately. All right, next game, another home game, Weber International. They are Weber Worldwide. <laughs> um, that's a W for me. Same. That's another one of those uh, Florida National types. Right. No slight. Uh, and then another home game. There's a lot of home non-conference yeah. this year. Um, December 22nd, Georgia Southern. That, they've always been a good little matchup. We in the, play them in, a lot. In recent years. Last year, they were the final game. It was the Battle of the Eagles um, in our, our tournament. Well, they're the Golden Eagles. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, in, the bat- in the tournament we had, the three-game tournament at Alico, they were the final game. We went 0-3 in that tournament. Um, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> that was unfortunate. But anyways... Um, if I remember correctly, that was a decent game. I think one of the halves was really bad for us. Um, Usually the first half. Or, no. Actually, I think it was a second half collapse, second half. if I remember. But anyway, you know what? I'm being bold, and I'm saying it's a win over Georgia Southern. I have that, too. I'm surprised. I think we're like 100% We right are. Now. We're the same right now. And we did not look at this before. I, we went out of our way to not talk about it. Cool. So, conference. This is where it's going to get... Swifty. Well, yeah, because conference is screwed up. Right. It's a screwed up schedule. Um, North Alabama first at home. Back-to-back games. Yep. January 1st and 2nd. To be honest, I have no clue how North Alabama is going to be. I mean, just based on last year, I'm pretty sure they lost one of their key guys to transfer, but they still have, I don't know if it's Christian Agnew or Jamari Blackman. One of those two is still there. Um, a junior, so he, he's good um, for sure. Um, going to be one of the better players in the conference, already is. Um, so, I mean, they're going to have a decent team. I think Pujol's a good coach. Um, from what I've seen, he's intense at the very least. But 
he's an intense guy, but um, you know, they're just to me they're they're perpetually like a middle of the pack team to me. Um, so I'm basically just gonna I'm gonna split the games with them because we've had trouble with them in the past. Even their first year, we were their first D1 win, unfortunately. Um, mm, I remember that. Yeah, but I'm gonna say we split with them one win and one loss. Well, this is where we first disagree. I have both games as a W. Oh, very interesting. I have us coming out stronger than some of the fans, and we think we might be. So I, I think two home games, we beat North Alabama. Um, something just tells me that they're not going to be as prepared for whatever reason. But uh, the next batch of games is at Liberty. Uh, the Liberty new arena. Yep. With, Smaller. With probably not that many fans, if nope. any. So that could be a benefit to us, could be a benefit to them. Yeah. I mean, Liberty's still going to be a good team. They're obviously not the they same. They lost a lot. No, but they still have Scotty James, and they still have... Do they have, still have Scotty James? I don't think they have Scotty James. They lost him and Caleb Holmesley. Was it? And they, they have that other guy. I forget his name. They have McGee. No, I, they do, he's but their, what's he's the other their guy's best player name? Coming oh, in? Cuffy. Cuffy? Yes. Do they still have Cuffy? Okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, they still have some talent for sure, but they are not, I mean, Holmesley and, and Scotty James were, were two of the top five players in the conference last year. They don't have that anymore. So it's, you know, whether they finish first somehow but the, or their sixth, school in general has been like elevated recently, like their football program. Yeah, man. How about that football team? So I think their overall athletics are still like elevating. Mm-hmm. Like they're just going up. So they're going to be a tough team to beat regardless year in and year in and year out. I have the first game as a loss to us, but then I also have us beating them the second game. I have the same thing, um, but whether I put a loss for the first time or the second time is kind of arbitrary. It is. <laughs> I yeah. put a win and a loss. I split it. Okay. So is it Bellarmine or Bellarmine? I think it's Bellarmine. Okay, Bellarmine. New team to the conference, the Knights. Formerly D2, D1 now. Got them at home. Prepare to get their ass beat. Hopefully. They look like a really good D2 team. I so. Actually, I have a split. I got two wins. Okay. I went with my, my gut. So we're back at the same record. Yep. So I, I don't know much about them. I haven't done a whole lot of research on them. Me either. Um, time will tell. Mm-hmm. This is the gut gamble. Not This isn't anything. Not science. No. Lipscomb, the team to beat this year. Yep. I'm going to just go out and quick say, say two losses. I have two losses as yeah. well. I mean, we could definitely beat them. We almost beat them last year. Um, and actually, we did beat them last year at home. Um, that was a really good game, actually. But we almost beat them in the tournament. And that was actually a good game, too. But Asajula scored... 40 yeah some something ridiculous which was part of the plan it was like a you know the, the plan of attack let him do all he can two points is worth less than three it was but, basically you're a team going against michael jordan michael jordan didn't suck right and a little not yeah, not that same level obviously. but but the same kind Sajla, of. you're not jordan <laughs> analogy but, um but you are hakeem alive no I'm <laughs> but um yeah, I, I just, we could definitely get a win for sure. We could even get two, but just for the purposes of this gut gamble, I'm going with two losses. Same. On the contrary, back at home against Stetson, I got two Ws. One win, one loss, because they're, they're a really good young team. You know how much, how much we struggled against Rob Perry last year? Out of nowhere, freshman score. Every time, both times he played us was like 25 points. Um, I believe... Uh, uh, Jawara is their, their big man. I believe he's still there. They got a solid team. And, you know, in the past when Stetson looked like, oh, you know what? They're going to be a surprise people this year. They didn't. And then last year they finally did. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, new coach, uh, good players. I'm just going to do a split there. Interesting. Kennesaw State, uh, we're playing at their place. I have a split. I have a split, too, which is, I think, one of the surprises of our gut gamble here, but apparently not because we thought the same way. And that was just giving their phenomenal recruiting class the benefit of the doubt. Their coach seems to be, you know, getting them into shape and and all that. They just they look better than, than they have. 
and a good young team, so we'll see. Back at home against JU, Jacksonville. I think they're supposed to be one of the worst teams in the conference this year, from what I recall. But anyways, I got two W's. I got two W's as well. I'm going against the strong home support of <laughs> limited fans as carrying us this year at home. So I got two W's there. And then the last batch of games in conference is at North Florida. And North Florida is always a... Thorn a, in the side. A coin flip. So I got a split. I got a split too. Even though North Florida, I think we should win both of those games. But... You know, it'd be like that sometimes. Um, you know, it's there, there's still Matt Driscoll, whatever you want to say about him. Um, he's been at the school a long time. He knows how to win a game. Um, he knows how to develop guys. He's a meme lord now. I love that meme. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> they, uh, you know, it just, it's it's a split at that point. Hopefully it's, hopefully we win the second one just so you, you know, go into the conference attorney on a hot streak but that would be the last game of the regular season though so what's your final record at if i did the math right which there's a good chance i didn't um 14 and 8 i got 13 and 9 wow so that's pretty damn close yeah it's we're we're for the most part on the same page because i i mean i fought myself to not pick us to win some games that i'm like well we really should win that because you just don't win all the games you should unfortunately and you know, there's a lot more leadership and veterans on this team. So, in theory, you do win the games you're supposed to win. That's the difference there. But it's just, it's hard to just think that <laughs> and go with it. But I would say 13 and 9 in this weird year isn't all that bad. Um, that I would say that's a significant success. Right. It's probably a top four seed in the Ace Sun Tourney, wherever that will be played. Probably a bubble format, um, you know. If we get there and you know, that means a home game unless, unless it's a bubble format, like I said, but you know, it's, it's progress. Go to Macon, Georgia and play <laughs> at Mercer Ew. like we used to. Ew. That was so unfair because Mercer was there like almost every year mm-hmm. and had unfair home support. But so, I mean, last thing to do is talk about what's coming up. First game yeah, of the don't, season. Don't hold us accountable to any of these no, predictions. Please no. Whether it be the stats and or the the win loss record, yeah, no, don't come at me saying you said you know. we will mute you. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely talk to us. Um, but yeah, all there is to do is Wednesday, first game of the season, Florida A and M. Kick it off in Alico Arena for the first time in a long time, and I haven't fully done you know my game preview yet, but. From what I can tell, they they had a lot of seniors last year, and they went, I believe, 12 and 15 or something like that on the season, so not too great. Um, lost a lot of seniors. They have at least three this year, maybe two, I think, and a, a few juniors, so they still have, you know, leadership, but I don't, I don't know exactly how good those guys project to be, but it's, you know, you, you kind of just think of them as a middle-of-the-road team in their conference, so... Like we both said, we think and hope that's going to be a win for us, huh? What? (laughs) (laughs) What did you say? (laughs) I heard that's a win for us, huh? I said we both think and hope that's going to be a win for us. Alright, um, so we'll jump right in. Um, it's been a crazy off season.